Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to calibrate and program the Spectrum ESC Motor 2-in-1 Combo. Well, before we get too much further, I just wanted to say thank you very much for stopping in and taking a look at another one of my videos. And if this does benefit you in some way, do please consider giving me a thumbs up and a subscription. That would really help me out. Well, with all of that out of the way, let's get to it. So of course, what you see in front of you is the Spectrum 2-in-1 motor and ESC combo, as well as a fully charged battery, a receiver and transmitter, and make sure that these are bound and ready to be used prior to setting this up, and our program box, which is not required for calibration, but if you wanted to do some additional programming, you would need this, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Your calibration is pretty simple. You're just gonna hold this button down until the light begins to blink. Now we'd want to be careful not to completely cover this up with our thumb or our finger because then we do need to see that light. So we'll just hold this button until you see flashing and let the button go. Now if you can hear the beeping out of the motor, that's indicating it's ready for calibration. So we'll push the button one time for neutral. And we'll pull the throttle full and push again. And do full reverse and push the button again. Now you heard three beeps there. The uh, first two beeps were counting the number of cells. We know we have a two cell LiPo, so that's counted those correctly. The third beep was indicating it's ready to be used. So we can give it full throttle here and full reverse. And that motor is now working. Now, should you want to do some additional programming, you will need the Spectrum programming box. This is the V2 version of the box. And if you look on the end here, it does come with this cable. Now here in the end of the cable, you can see the orientation that they are plugged into. So the white wire is lined up with the S, the black wire is lined up with the negative, and you can see underneath we do have this plugged into the ESC side of that port. So that's very important that you plug this in correctly. Now with all that plugged into here correctly, we're going to uh, take out the little dust cover in the end of the switch, and we'll plug this in appropriately as well. So the black against the negative, the signal on the loop little icon that's there, and you know that you got it plugged in right. And we'll turn on the system. That will power up our programming box. Now this will not connect to the ESC until you hit the select button here, and then it will connect to the ESC. It will flash the version of firmware that it's currently using before it will let you edit the settings. Now the, the RPM throttle match setting is a setting that will match the RPM to the load that is on the ESC. So if it comes under heavy load, it will adjust the RPM appropriately to try and reduce load on that ESC. Now this is a feature that can help the ESC last longer within, the, within this combo, so that's why they, they have it uh, set here. Now I was playing with this a little bit earlier, and that's why this is no longer on the default setting. So anytime you see the asterisk, you know that that's going to be the default setting within that system. Now to save that setting, you do have to hit the save button every time you make an adjustment. Uh, you don't want to wait until the last thing here because that will not save your previous settings. Pressing the select button will navigate to the second setting, which is your auto lipo setting. So right now it's set to um, auto detect the cells and that second beep that we heard when we powered the system on would indicate that it is in that proper setting. Now, if you wanted to change that, you can set this for two cell or three cell, but I would recommend leaving that on the auto setting. The third option is your LiPo cutoff levels. So this is set in a mid and you can set this to a high or a disabled or a low. So if you're doing nickel metal hydride batteries, you would want to set this on disabled. If you're an experienced user, you would set it on low, uh, mid for the mid level and so on and so on. Pressing the button again, you would get to your ESC thermal protections. So this is a setting again, you can adjust if you want to change these values, um, but probably best to leave it on the default setting. Pressing the button again is your motor rotation. So if you pull the trigger and the vehicle goes backward, you can adjust the um, rotation of the motor here. Your BEC voltages, this is beneficial if you're running a high voltage servo that needs 7.4 volt. You can change that value to 7.4 if you like. 
Pressing the button again, this is your drag brake level. So at level four, it's a pretty mid-grade setting. If you wanted more drag brake, you can increase this value. Pressing the button again is your drag brake rate level. Now this is how quickly the ESC applies the drag brake when you let go of the throttle. So this again is something you can play with um, as far as the value goes. Uh, this is your maximum reverse. So if you wanted to change this value, you don't want all the reverse. This is where that setting is. Then you have your restore default setting before it goes back to option number one. Now for error codes, there are two lights within this button here, uh, two LEDs rather. The blinking green lights are gonna indicate a overheating. The blinking red light would indicate that it is in low voltage detection mode. Now another use of the blinking green light is there's actually a self check feature within this motor in ESC. And you access that by holding down this button for a really long period of time. So when you hold the button down, the ESC will begin to blink red before it blinks green. If you release it on the green blinks, it will run through its self-checks. Now the self-checks don't start immediately. They will start after a little bit of period of time and the motor will begin to run. Now with this in mind, you do want to disconnect the pinion gear anytime you run this self-check because the vehicle will run by itself. So you do want to take those proper precautions to keep things from getting damaged. Once this self-check is complete, the system will blink red and then come back on indicating that it is ready to be used. Now you can see the motor rotating. Uh, hopefully you can see the motor rotating. If not, maybe you can hear it rotating against my table here. Then it will rotate in the other direction. Before it will um, blink and um, the red lights will blink on the ESC indicating it's finished. Well guys, that's it for calibrating and setup on this motor and ESC. And if you benefited in any way from this video, do please consider giving me a thumbs up and a subscription. And whether you're new here or you're returning visitors, please do hit that bell. That way you can see those new uploads as they come available. And uh, that way I can continue to help you out. Well, that'll wrap up this video and I hope to see you in the next one.